hey everybody on august 19th dxo is going to do something really cool in honor of national photography day they have offered to give one lucky person here licenses to i think it's all of their software photolab 8 pure raw 5 nick collection 8 film pack 7 and viewpoint 5 you're going to get licenses for all of those. So I will tell you at the end of this video how you can qualify for that. What an awesome offer. I can't wait to share it. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, I am working with Nick 8 Silver Effects. Now, just about any version of Silver Effects, I believe all the way back to the beginning, will be able to do what I'm about to show you. So it really doesn't matter which version you have. So I hope you enjoy this. I am going to talk only about the zone system and how I use the zone system within this program to help make adjustments and to also watch out for a few things in my images. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the zone system, it was created by Ansel Adams and it is mostly or has traditionally mostly been used for judging your exposures out in the field so getting the exposure right while you are out there in the field but it can also be used to help you during your editing for your black and white work all right now in earlier versions uh, the zone system may be located in a different spot but it is uh, the one that has all the numbers right here and now it is tied directly with the histogram. So when you hover over these, 00, zero is going to be 100% black. And you will see these little hash marks. Now I'm going to click on the 0, and the hash marks will stay as I move my mouse around. So if I'm concerned about a particular tonal value, so say I don't want to overexpose highlights. So I'm going to click on, I'm going to unclick 0. And I'm going to click on number 10. All right, so I have some blown highlights here. But specifically, I want to see what happens to those highlights if I were to pick a different, say, film type or start to do some editing. So Ilford Pan actually uh, lowered those highlights just a little bit. So those that number 10 just disappeared. So it'll pop back up again if I hover over some of these other film types. And you can see that, let me click that one for now. You can see that right in here, that most of the bird is now overexposed. That's a bad one. I probably wouldn't choose that unless I decided to come in and adjust the highlights. That pretty severe curve that you're looking at below is part of that film preset. So I actually like the way that Kodak uh, T-Max 100 looks on this image. And so I'm going to select that, but I do want to make sure that my highlights are preserved. And I'm going to do that by coming to my levels or curves adjustment. Uh, on earlier versions, you can also grab highlights, shadows, and things like that in order to make adjustments further. But I'm going to just grab this curve adjustment. I'm going to bring my highlights back down a little bit so I just make sure that I don't clip those highlights. So that is one way that I can use the zone system in order to make sure that I am not clipping my highlights and my shadows. Something else I can do is as I hover over these, say I have uh, an image of a person and I know that average Caucasian skin is typically around zone six in a black and white image. So if I click on the six, I can see the tones right in here that are zone six. And say I wanted to brighten those a little bit or darken those a little bit. I clicked on zone six. I know where that is. I've identified where it is in my photo and I can just make adjustments accordingly. So if I wanted to make this image darker. I can do that and you can actually see those little tick marks if I zoom in right here and you can actually see how they shift back and forth. See how they move as I make overall adjustments. So if there is a particular tone that you want represented, you can click on that tonal number 
and make sure that the area of the photo that you would like to match that tone matches that tone by making adjustments to the overall tone curve or the highlights or the shadows. So say I wanted a little bit less contrast in my background and I notice that these tonal values right in here are a good deal brighter than all of this. And I have a lot of black. Oh my goodness. Lots of black. But it makes the bird stand out, so it's exactly what I want. So let's highlight that, and now I know that that's a brighter tonal value. But say I don't want to make that adjustment to the entire image. Maybe I just want to make an adjustment right in here. This is a good opportunity for a control point. So I'm going to add a basic adjustments. And here I've got some brightness, contrast, structure, and tonality adjustments. So I'm clearly just looking at this, and that's why I used the zone system here to highlight that area. And that's all it does. It highlights that area. It tells me what tonal value exists right here. Now I can't drag this number back and forth and adjust that overall. I have to do something a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and click on a control point and I'm going to click it right in here. So it has sampled that tonal value and I'm going to say I just want this to be a little bit less less bright. Okay, easy enough. So when I look at that mask you can see that it's selecting mostly just that area right in here and of course you can stretch this out, expand it to the entire image if you like, or bring it in tighter and then of course you can make any adjustments within here that you want. This is not a lesson on control points. I have a whole nother video on mastering control points. Um, it is over a year old so I've got everything including the luminosity mask everything except for the new color mask and so I will have to do a new video on that one soon. That's that adjustment being on and off and I can see it better if I actually turn that off. There we go. I just kind of toned down that area a little bit and that's basically how I use control points for the most part. It's essentially dodging and burning within this program or you can add structure or do selective colorization. Lots of fun. All right, so just to sum it up, using that zone system in here, it's going to show me all of the underexposed areas. And as I hover over each of these, it's going to show me every single one that I've got here. So I now know when I hover over number 10 that I don't have any blown highlights on this image, which is great. That is something that is very important if you were going to make a print of this because blown highlights actually have zero data and no ink will actually go down on the paper. <laughs> so you don't want that to happen if you're going to make a very high quality black and white print. Make sure you rescued all those highlights. Now, if you've got some zeros here, I don't mind a little bit of 100% black. I actually enjoy 100% black in my image. I got no problem with that at all. But if I thought that that was a little, mm, you know, too much, um, I could take my my shadows here and, and maybe bring them up a little bit. And you'll actually see, look at how that shrinks and expands just by taking the shadow slider back and forth. Really, really handy, but don't forget to unclick that if you want to get rid of all of the uh, hash marks there. So, And they do change color. It doesn't mean anything. It just makes it easier to see because the yellow hash marks are, they stand out up against the dark background. If I was using yellow hash marks in the 9 and 10, it would be very, very difficult to see. So they switch to blue and switch to red kind of right in the middle there. And it just makes it easier for you guys to see them. And they don't actually mean anything. As promised, this is what you have to do in order to qualify for that awesome giveaway by DxO. Just go ahead and give this video a like. It's not that hard. And please leave a comment below and let me know which of those programs that I mentioned you are most looking forward to getting and giving a try. Whether you own an earlier version or you just want to try something new, let me know which one you're most excited, most excited about. And I will pick the winner after the 19th and let you guys know. I'll send your information to DxO and they will give you all those licenses, which is awesome. Hope you have fun. 
Thank you again for being here and I will see you in another video, hopefully.